What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and this is part two in a series about designing a bookmarking user interface inside of Adobe XD. In part one, we did all the design work for both a light and a dark mode version of this interface. And now in part two, we're gonna be doing all the prototyping, bringing it to life and using some really great features like auto animate, component states, and a bunch of other tricks to make this thing look really, really slick. I can't wait for this project to be all done and toggle things on and off. I wish it was a real application because I am forgetful. I got a bad memory. All right, back for part two. Let's jump right in and let's start working on our XD file. Uh, the first thing we want to do, probably, probably the lowest hanging fruit, is to make this thing toggle over from light to dark. That's going to be super duper easy to do. So why don't we, uh, let's see, go to our left bar over here and we have our whole dark mode thing. And let's go inside of dark mode and we have toggle. So let's just zoom in on toggle. Uh, what we want to do is basically, since everything is named exactly the same on both of these artboards, left bar, left bar, right bar, uh, toggle switches, all that kind of stuff, we should technically just be able to go to the prototype tab here and we should be able to um, just prototype from one to the other. We should say on tap, we want to auto animate. Um, and the destination is dark, let's ease in, ease out, and then we should be able to come back here and do the same thing. Whoa, should be able to come back and just prototype back to light. Let's see, <laughs> we'll find out if that actually works, okay? So let's just take our prototype and make sure that we can see all of it. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can just boom and boom. Just like that, it goes from light to dark. Doesn't need to be anything special, I don't think, right? It's just a color swap, okay? So I would like it to be a little bit more of a fade, though, almost, you know what I'm saying? So let's see why it's not fading exactly. Auto animate, transition, what does it look like to just transition? Not sure. Yeah, pretty much. We should just do a straight transition. That's probably the easier one to do. Um, not even needing to really auto animate. So dissolve, yeah, just dissolving in and out uh, to each other. So here we go again, just whoop, whoop. Okay, so we have a simple transition that moves back and forth between light mode and dark mode. Now we need to create some animation in between the different states, okay? So we need to be able to, uh, for instance, tap on videos and only see the videos. That's kind of like the first thing we wanna do. So let's go in here actually first and grab our entire navigation, okay? So we have the subcategory nav, let's go ahead and press Command or Control K to make a component out of it. Um, so this is default state, okay? Um, we wanna have a video state, and you can do this for all the different states, blogs, music, photos, but we're just gonna do a single one for videos, okay? And that means that we're going to move this thing over to videos, I'm gonna crank this up from 38 to 100, and this one goes down to 38, okay? That means that within all this subcategory nav, it's a new component of ours with multiple states, okay, we can toggle back and forth between those two states. And we wanna prototype those states as well, so that we would head to prototype, and we would hit videos, and when videos is hit, while it's currently actively on all, we want it to auto animate to videos, okay? And then that's good. So now we go back to subcategory, we would go to the videos, that's where we're at. When we tap back on all, we want it to go to the default state. So let's select our subcategory nav, back to the default state, here it is. Should be able to just now animate back and forth between the two. Pretty cool, okay, great. Now what we wanna do is, um, I think we want to actually, grab all of these elements, all of these slides that we put together or the, these pieces of content, right? Okay, so we have card one, two, three, four, five. Let's grab all of them and group them together. Call it cards without the space in between the C and the A and then press Command or Control K to make a component out of it. We're in the default state, right? Okay, great. So let's make a new state called card videos 
and we will now modify what we see here. So first thing we want to do is we want um, this one to just uh, scroll down, or just kind of animate down and disappear. Same thing with this one, roll down, disappear. Then we want this one to roll up and we want this one, maybe we want this one also. We'll take the background thing there. Mm -hmm. Card, 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 card one. Sorry, this is card three. We wanna take the background here and we want to just resize. Let's bring this guy up. Just give it a little bit of padding. Come in here and we want to probably resize this one as well. Kind of do a little bit more of that masonry grid, okay? So, okay, that works out. We have these um, play buttons there and we should now be able to, with the cards, we should be able to, where'd they go? Uh, we should be able to go default state here to there, okay? Now the trick here is to grab our subcategory nav and our cards and make a new component out of those, right? So they should be able to scroll together, do the whole thing together. And this is called cards and, uh, let's call it cards and nav, okay? Cards and nav is currently in the default state. Does that make sense? Yeah, cards and nav is currently in the default state. Very good. Now we need to make a new one that's called cards and nav videos, okay? And let's put a little dash in between so it's easy to kind of delineate between the two. Cards and nav videos. That means we're gonna take this one and switch it over to its video form and take this one and switch it over to its card videos form, just like that, okay? Now let's go back to the default state. We had, we had this one, uh, our images were still set to, to the card state, okay? So with that being said, we should be able to come in here. We should, we should be able to come in here and grab videos and now make sure we're on prototype here. We want to auto animate to, whoa, and maybe we need to do something here really quickly. We need to put something tappable, I think. Don't you think that that's the way we have to do it? I think so too. Um, okay, yeah, we got to put something tappable in here. So let's do that. I'm going to come into design just like this. I'm going to make a rectangle just like that. And it's going to be an invisible tappable area. And I'm going to do a second one right over here. Okay. So we have a tappable area there, tappable area there. Well, let's call this all, uh, we'll call this tap all, and we'll call this one tap vids. Okay. So with that being said, when we go back to our prototype, I want to select on tap vids. And when I do that, I want the whole thing, this whole nested component that we've made to move to card and nav videos, just like that. Now, when I select uh, this one, the all, I want it to head back to card, not card and nav videos, but mm -hmm, that's not right. This whole thing should have default state and card and nav, right? Default state, card and nav. So again, videos, we tap vids, we head to card and nav videos. Great, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, that's what we have to do. Now, when we're in the card and nav videos, we need to go here to that tappable area and animate it back to the default state. You tracking with me? Okay, so we should be able to go back and forth between the two now, see that? So now uh, it, it's, it's a nested component. We're moving the components inside of it around, that subcategory nav right here, and the card area, that masonry layout. But we've nested the whole thing together and we've given that nested component different states, the all state and the video state, just like that. Pretty cool. Um, and maybe one thing we could do really quickly to just kind of finish this thing out is when this thing is on the video state, I think I want, this thing just to stretch all the way to the bottom. That way everything's kind of moving. I feel like that'll be a little bit nicer. So we could just go back and forth like that. Everything is moving. The masks are rearranging. We can come back here, we can dark mode in, dark mode out. Um, dark mode in, dark mode out. Pretty cool, except we should be here on all. So 
What is our problem? Our problem is we need to always start out on the default state on this guy. Now we can go back and forth between the two and we can dark mode between those two. Pretty cool. Now again, you can do all of these. You can set up a component state for blogs and music and photos. That's looking pretty good. Why don't we do a little hover state really, really quickly. What if we come in here and do a hover state for this guy? And our hover state is just gonna end, whoa, let's zoom in. I feel like maybe it should be a little bit more subtle like that. And why don't we twist it like that? I don't know, it could work. Let's try it. Does it work all right? No, it does not. It does not work good because we have to go back to the default state first. Here we go. Now we should see a little bit of that hover going on there. Should be able to click back and forth. Not bad. We can take this whole thing, our category nav, make it a component, command or control K. And then we can go through and set up the different states here as well. Let's go ahead and fast forward through that. That way we have some hovers as we roll over these things. It'd be kind of fun. Okay, we're all set. We've set up hover states for all of the other um, navigation items. So we should be able to press play. We should be able to get hover states over each one of those. Now we can change the timing to them if we want to, but that looks pretty good so far. We can dark mode there, we can dark mode back, we can hover over things, we can add some transitions between our masonry grid, we can hover over these things. It's all kind of coming to life and there's barely any extra artboards that are going on here. All of this has to do with component states, which makes it really easy to maintain and kind of chain things off of each other and have lots of fun with your prototype, really bring it to life. Well, that's it for the video and that's it for this little series, designing a bookmarking interface inside of Adobe XD. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I do videos like this one all the time, so maybe stick around and hit that little bell notification icon so you know when another video like this one comes out. If you have any questions or thoughts on how I could have improved this design, please leave those down in the comments and check the description for some helpful links about interface design and Adobe XD. I'll put some cool stuff down there for you. I hope you guys are having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things. I hope you're making amazing things. And I hope you're loving the things that you design as you design them. I'll see you in the next one.